Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. We're going to work on this KitchenAid three door refrigerator. And the issue that we're going to talk about today is if the refrigerator cabinet is not cooling very well, but the freezer is. Other symptoms that you may see in this refrigerator is that you will see ice on the back wall, or you may be hearing a noise from the back wall of the unit, some sort of grinding noise, which is going to be the evaporator fan icing over. We're going to do three different fixes to go through this system completely to make sure that your refrigerator will cool properly as we're starting to see a lot of problems on these kitchen aids as well as whirlpools. Now, the big thing about this is you may have four doors or even five doors on your refrigerator, but they all look the same because as soon as you open the doors on it, you're going to see the ice maker on the top of the unit and that's how you know that this fix is for this style fridge. So let's go ahead and get started on this by removing the shelves on the inside. To start off, we want to remove the top shelves by pulling up on them, then out of the unit. In some cases, you may need to remove the shelves on the door in the same way, but it may vary depending on your refrigerator's setup if you need this or not. To remove the crisper drawers, there is a small plastic hook that keeps these inside the glides on the inner side of the drawers. You'll take a screwdriver and simply push the hook towards the front of the drawer, then pull up. There isn't a retention piece on the outside of these shelves. Next, you'll remove the glass and the entire crisper assembly. In the case of this three-door unit, you can simply pull the glass out, and the crisper assembly should come out in one piece or very easily in two pieces. You'll then remove the glass from the chef's pantry as well as the large drawer itself by simply pulling it out. This will expose the giant cross piece that we need to get out next to remove the iced up evaporator in the back. Depending on if you have a three, four, or five door refrigerator, the next steps vary. On a three door, you'll take the glass out and you'll need a flat blade screwdriver to remove the cover of the wire harness on the chef's pantry. You're going to then remove the wire and unplug it from the harness, which will allow you to remove this entire cross piece from the refrigerator. Just make sure to slide the cross piece to the left and ensure that the wire trunk has been removed just like you see in the video. Okay, so far we have all of the drawers taken out of this unit. We're leaving the harness system in here on this three door unit. If you have a four or a five door unit, you're going to run into a whole lot more teardown problems than this one that we have right here. On the four doors, you will have to take this section out because it's kind of like molded in with the evaporator tower system. I've had to do more of those than I have three doors. So if, quick tip on the four door, is there going to be small holes for a screwdriver, a flat bladed screwdriver, you'll press in on them and that's how you can pop the harness system on those four doors. You still have to use the same technique or something similar to remove the wire harness to get it at least out of the way. But let's assume that you have your four or five door taken care of at this point. And I should have some links in the description on how to remove everything for those. They are a bigger pain than a three door, but they are removable and you do have to remove everything to get to this section in the unit. So let's go ahead and start working on getting the air tower out. And you're gonna need a quarter inch hex head screwdriver. This is the smallest one I have because as you start taking the water system out, you need a very thin hex head screwdriver to accomplish it. Use the small quarter inch hex head screwdriver to remove the two long screws from the filter assembly and cover. At the top of the refrigerator, you're going to open the water housing and remove the filter. Expect some water to splash out from both the housing and the filter itself too. Once done, use the screwdriver to pry the plastic facade down from the water housing system. This could take some force, and once you pry it from the tabs, you're going to see the housing what it was set in. From here, you're going to need to remove that wire harness from the lights to fully remove the panel from the refrigerator. Once the facade is out of the way, there are a huge number of wire harnesses between the water tower and the ice maker. You're going to need to go through and separate every single harness. Once you complete this, you'll also need to remove the water line that goes from the water tower and to the ice maker as you won't be able to remove the ice maker without it. I wasn't able to get a video of me removing this, but you'll need needle nose pliers and push the cap into the valve and then pull the water line out from the water tower rather than the ice maker. Now to the ice maker itself, you're going to use your screwdriver to gently pry out the ice maker's front facade. There's a small wire harness that you'll need to separate as it has a small heater that warms the front of the ice making system itself. 
With that done, you'll use your screwdriver's quarter inch hex head and remove two screws that are keeping the ice maker in its housing. Once you remove the two screws, you'll pull forward on the ice maker housing and then down to remove it from its position. Note the four clips that keep the unit into place as you'll need to line these up when you put the ice maker back into place when the fix is finished. From here we can remove the two screws holding the evaporator panel on. Note the bubbles on the refrigerator liner underneath. This one likely got hit with a hair dryer trying to get rid of the ice on the cover at some point, but it began to melt the liner also. If you're watching this video and you have a ton of ice in this area, either use a no heat setting on the dryer or a fan on a higher air volume setting so this does not happen to you. With the evaporator cover unscrewed, the last step is to remove the air tower, which can be pretty tricky. In the middle of the cover are metal brackets for the shelving, and on this exterior of the brackets are small tabs that you will need to separate with a screwdriver. This can be extremely tedious to do, but I got very lucky on this unit to remove it. If you're patient though, you can and will be able to separate these tabs and pry the cover off, finally revealing the evaporator system. The first thing that you want to check is the fan to ensure that it is running. So far, I have yet to actually unplug the refrigerator, and you can't really see it very well from this angle, but the fan is running just fine. However, if your fan is not running, it's a major concern because air flows coming from the freezer up during the defrost cycle to bring warm or hot air in, and if the fan doesn't work, it means the coils will not heat up to defrost them in the mode. To force the fan on, press the left two buttons on your door's interface and hold for three seconds. Once you have done this, press the fifth button and you will cycle up until you get to the option that is number three, which deals with the evaporator fan. Press the third button once to get it to shift fan modes and see if the fan does come on at all. If it doesn't, something is definitely wrong with the fan and it's likely that it needs replaced. Another thing to check if the fan does not work is this harness connection that powers the fan and your thermostats. You can unplug this by pressing on the small flap and then pulling it apart. You could use a screwdriver for this or may need to. Once you separate it, you can look at the connectors inside the harness and look for corrosion, which could be the culprit. If you find corrosion, you can use specialty cleaners to restore the connection, but if that does not fix it, then likely the fan is bad and needs replaced. Should the fan work, the likely culprit is the thermistor on the evaporator. This tells the control board what the temperature on the evaporator system is during defrost. They have a tendency to go bad, and when they do, they will tell the fridge that the cabinet is defrosted too early, which will leave tons of ice in the cabinet and water melted in the refrigerator. You can test this by cutting it out and simply checking it with a multimeter, but quite frankly, Frankly, it's going to be easier to simply buy a new fan and thermistor kit which are improved and put them in the new proper place. Some models of refrigerators have these two components wired in also with a thermostat and it's simply attached to this housing and can be removed with the needle nose pliers as you see here. To remove the evaporator fan, it is attached with four small rubber pegs that need stretched to allow the fan to be removed from the bottom. I typically use needle nose pliers to pull at them from the bottom, so only the rubber pegs are stressed rather than the rubber that goes around the entire fan housing. This is the all-in-one kit you'll typically need to fix your unit, but verify by putting your model number into the website to confirm it. The parts are upgraded from the ones inside your refrigerator, and they will help the fridge to operate properly and not ice over anymore. One of the most important factors to this fix is moving the thermistor from the top of the black and copper coils down onto the flat piece of the black evaporator system where the ice is likely to form. This will help ensure the thermistor doesn't warm up too fast. I did move the cap tube so you could see this more easily, but you may not want to move it or the gray mastic tape in the process of this fix. Once completed, you can thread the white thermistor back through the small hole and reattach it to the gray thermistor holder like you're seeing here on the video. The thermistor on the black line is far more likely to be the problem, but for this particular KitchenAid, both sensors and fan come together as a kit, so you have to replace all three of these at the same time. To reinstall the fan, you'll thread the black pegs onto each of the four slots and then take a pair of needle nose pliers and use them to pull on the pegs to fully seat the pegs onto the plastic housing. This can be tricky if you try to do it by hand, but the pliers work great. In many instances, your kit will also have some sticky tape for the front of the fan to insulate it against the plastic housing when it gets reinstalled. 
Another thing to look at while this deep in the refrigerator is the drain line hole. On this refrigerator, the plastic drain pan looks like it was destroyed by someone likely using a putty knife to chip ice away. You can't see it on camera, but there's a lot of plastic shards now in the drain line. You can clean this out with curved needle nose pliers, there's debris. But you can also use a bottle of water with a plastic line to blast it with water to remove any ice or other small things lodged, and I do have a video of trying that on a different refrigerator. With the line cleared and the fan and thermistors replaced, one big last thing to do is to switch the refrigerator from defrosting dynamically to a forced 8 hour defrost mode. This will clear the refrigerator more often, ensuring the ice doesn't build up. To do this, go back into diagnostics and then select mode number 7, then press button number 3 to switch it to the second mode to force it into a basic defrost pattern, and this will help your fridge out immensely. With these four steps done, your KitchenAid or Whirlpool refrigerator should be in a much better position to remove ice from the cabinet. The only other thing that you could do is to add a secondary defrost heater to the system as a last ditch effort, much like a Samsung refrigerator, but that does require heavy modifications. I actually did this to this refrigerator to see if it would work, and it did, but that's going to be a different time for a different video. All that's left now is putting the refrigerator back together, and you'll simply do all the steps in reverse. Don't forget the wire harness in the chef's pantry, and I think the hardest part for me typically is mounting the ice maker back into its slot. You'll find that sewing it back together is much easier than taking it apart, and this may be one of the least fun refrigerators ever made to put back together. Hopefully it cools down better for you and you can store some cookies, because you definitely earned one today with this repair. Thanks for watching, guys.